A pre-dawn phone call awakens the Queen's right-hand man. On the other end of the line, a man who's just been sacked and wants his job back as he prepares to utter his now famous declaration. Well, may we say, God save the Queen. Because nothing will save the Governor-General. Fast forward 45 years and that telephone nugget is contained in a treasure trove of personal letters. Cheers from a small minority. With a free character assessment about the unpopular author of many of the dispatches thrown in for good measure. He was a very chatty correspondent. The saga came to a head in October 1975, with budget bills being blocked in the Senate by Malcolm Fraser's opposition. The Governor-General had been keeping the palace in the loop, which in turn advised him of his constitutional duties. The final paragraph in this letter from Sir John, the country is set on a collision course now of historic proportions. Six days before Whitlam was sacked, the Queen's private secretary noted Her Majesty had been informed of the saga, but that didn't mean she had any wish to intervene. The crisis had to be worked out in Australia, he wrote. The Governor-General informed the palace of the dismissal on that fateful day in November, saying he took the decision without informing the Queen first. The palace responded the following week, arguing that in not informing the Queen, Sir John had acted with perfect constitutional propriety. The historian who's battled for years to have the letters released is dismayed the palace had a role at all. For the Queen's private secretary to be uh, commenting to the Governor-General who was about to exercise those powers on the existence and possible use of those very powers, I think, is, is alarming. Late this evening, Buckingham Palace issued a statement arguing the Queen still believes private correspondence should remain private, but saying the release of the letters confirms neither she nor her staff had any part to play in the dismissal. Gough Whitlam is said to have described the 1975 crisis as a race to the palace threatening to ask the Queen to sack John Kerr as the Governor-General was considering dismissing Mr Whitlam. While the letters today don't prove any conspiracy between the Palace and the Governor-General to oust a Prime Minister, they do show John Kerr took reassurance and comfort from the Queen's closest adviser as he took that extraordinary decision. Matthew Doran, ABC News, Canberra.